Hey guys, welcome to Marcus Loves Movies. My name is Marcus Lee, and welcome to my Money Heist Season 5 Part 2 Reaction Review Mini Discussion. We finally reached the end of the road, boys to men style, with this show. What a whirlwind it has been. So I'm going to talk about this season without trying to give too many spoilers away if you haven't seen earlier seasons of Money Heist, but I recommend that you do. So these guys have been inside the Bank of Spain for the longest time. They have been trying to steal gold. And this final part of the season is about how do they get the gold out of the bank? Also, halfway through season five, the first five episodes, we saw that we lost a major character. I'm not going to say who or how because that's a bit of a spoiler but we know that a major character is no longer going to be part of proceedings towards this finale so i'm going to split this review into two parts i'm going to focus on some of the negatives the not so good things about this final season and i'm going to end on a high with the positives because there's a lot of good things to say about the show so on the negatives one of the big negatives for me is that we have a lot of flashbacks we have a lot of flashbacks to what the characters lives were like before they entered the Bank of Spain to take part in this robbery. I think I mentioned in season five, part one, in my season five, part one review, that this show does that a lot, similar to what Orange is the New Black used to do with their characters. So here we get to see what the character lives were like before they ended up robbing this bank. And a character that we focus on a lot is Berlin. And Berlin was very involved in the early seasons in this robbery, and he's not around so much now. And I thought it was unnecessary padding that we keep going back and focusing on this Berlin character costs. Let's move on. Berlin's not around anymore, so let's focus on the future. But this inclusion of Berlin all the time just felt like unnecessary padding, like they didn't have enough fresh, exciting new storylines. So let's keep going back and let's focus on what Berlin is doing. However, a good thing that I think they address in this final five episode arc is that they really explore what happened to Berlin, some of the things that happened in his personal life, and that explains why he is like he is in the why he basically wanted to rob the Bank of Spain, why he's a negative person, why he's a hurt, angry person. And I think this final art helped to explain why he is the way he is. The longer Money Heist has continued for, the more and more far-fetched this show has become. The good thing about the first two seasons is that it felt like a very high-end, realistic bank heist with the professor who had planned everything out meticulously. The level of intelligence was mind-blowing. It was fantastic. But the more and more the show has continued, the more and more far-fetched situations have become, the more and more fluky it has become. So it becomes less believable. I feel like the show, I said this in my season five, part one, uh, review, I felt like this show was on the verge of jumping the shark, so it felt like it was the right time to wrap it up and bring it to a close, because situations are getting a little bit silly now. So, for example, some of the things that happen in this final arc of the season, so we've lost a major, major character. I won't say who, or I won't say how, but if you do your research, you'll know how. Um, so we've lost a major character, so the main cast are in mourning for the loss of this character, Character. They're gutted, they are broken by it. But then, literally an episode or so later, the same merry band of brothers and sisters who are mourning are all stood around dancing and singing because they've had a major breakthrough. Now, if you've lost someone that you love deeply, are you literally going to be singing and dancing a few hours later? That that wasn't believable. In the bank, some characters find time to do things that you think you're in the middle of a heist, so you need to concentrate on the heist, but they find time to do other things like talk about romance and their love lives. Some characters find time to have a striptease, which leads to sex. And I'm thinking, you guys should be busy doing other things. I mean, maybe I need to learn about my time management from you guys, because you seem to be multitasking very, very well, but they find time to do these things. On the outside of the bank, there's another story where some characters are on the run from the police and then they're hiding out and then they end up hiding out in an apartment whilst the town is on like martial law lockdown. And whilst they're in this apartment, not only do they manage to break into an empty apartment and hide out there, but because the police are coming to find them, they then manage to hide inside a sofa, inside a sofa, inside a sofa, not one of these you know, seven seater DFS bad boys. These three characters, not one person, three characters managed to hide inside a little sofa. So when the police break in, they're searching the apartment and they can't find these people because they're hid in a sofa. 
far-fetched. With episodes six and seven, as much as I liked Money Heist, I thought, yeah, this show really needs to start to wrap it up. It needs to draw it to a close. We don't want to jump the shark. It's already a little bit silly, but we really need to draw this show to a close now. However, with the last few episodes, I found that I started enjoying them a lot more as the story was reaching or kind of heading towards its conclusion. I felt like the story just got better and better. There were a couple of twists and turns which I didn't see coming, which made the story a lot more enjoyable. So I was looking forward to the big finale. And I gotta say the finale, I loved it. We often talk about how shows can live or die or ruin their legacy based on how good the final episode is. We know that, you know, Breaking Bad finished very well. We know that Game of Thrones, not so much. So we know that the finale of a show can really affect its legacy. And I thought the ending of the show was fantastic. The use of the song Fix You by Coldplay pops up in this final episode and Fix You is a song we've heard in TV shows and movies a ton of times over the last 15 years. It's overused, it's, it's used too much. However, I felt like the use of Fix You in this final episode was absolutely fantastic. Used well to the point where I actually felt a little bit emotional, like I wanted to cry at what I was seeing on screen because the use of that song and the crescendo and the way the music builds, I just thought was absolutely fantastic, really well used. And I thought it was a great finale and a great way to end the season. I think this show did a great job of changing your mind about certain characters. There are characters that you might not like as much, but then you grow to like them because their allegiance has to change. There are characters who you really dislike, but then you start to feel sorry for uh, the Copper Sierra who, you know, we've, we've not liked her for many, many seasons, but we started to warm to her and she's got a really pivotal role in this final part of the season. So well done to the writers for making us start to warm towards her because she was a really unlikable character. I still think there are slightly unrealistic things that, you know, this, this pregnant woman could do these amazing things while she was heavily pregnant. I thought that was a little bit silly, but yeah, I think the way these characters have been written has been really good. So high five to the writers here. This has been a great show. I think it's ending at the right time. We don't need a season six. We're not going to get a season six. It's reached its course. And I think it's been, it's been a joy to watch. You could argue that this show should have ended after season two because I still think the first two seasons of Money Heist were the best ones. I thought three and four were all right. They kept the, they kept the energy going, but they weren't as great. But I think season five redeemed season three and four. It was a really strong ending. It's been a really good show. And I was probably going to give this an average rating, but I think the way that this season ended means I'm going to give Money Heist a slightly higher rating than I might have done. So my official Marcus Loves rating for Money Heist Season 5 Part 2 is Mini Drum Roll, 4 stars. Make sure you watch the end credits of the very last episode as well because we get some great credits. I watched it, I felt emotional. It made me think, oh what a journey we've been on. But that's just me. I would love to know what you think as well. Did you also feel emotional? Did you shed a tear? Did you shed a tear? Did you say, I'm not crying, you're crying? Let me know what you thought. Let me know in the comment section. Whilst you're here, can I encourage you to give this video a thumbs up, give it a like. And also if you do like your TV reviews and movie reviews and trailer reactions and film and TV discussion, can I encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel right here. Hit the subscribe button and also hit the notification bell so you're notified every time I release a brand new video. Guys, thank you for watching Marcus Loves Movies. Please stay tuned for the next video I release and I will catch up with you again soon. But thank you for watching my Money Heist Season 5 Part 2 review. That is such a mouthful. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care and I'll see you soon.